started third in the race, and Petty went to second right away. And uh, Petty uh, was leading, and he had ignition trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think he lost five laps or something in the pits. I don't remember now. But anyway, he lost time in the pits. And I got ahead of him and never gave it up and finished 15 seconds ahead of him. And the third-place man was um, um, five laps behind. Wow. Um, you know, the leader, uh, myself and uh, Petty. So you can figure Petty and myself was five laps ahead of everybody else. So you can tell whether we had to run hard or not. Wow. That was a great, that was probably the biggest thrill in my life in racing because, you know, any time that you could beat the king, <laughs> uh, you know, that's what you go there to do, try to win the race. And, uh, you know, that to me was uh, my biggest my biggest year was being able to actually run with him and, and beat him. <laughs> and not taking nothing away from Richard Petty, uh, you know, he was factor back. And uh, I, was, I was independent, but, um, you know, that, you know, the, not taking nothing away from me, you know, on, if he hadn't had any trouble in the pits, yeah, he would have beat me. <laughs> but he did, and that's racing, and I was lucky to stay ahead of him. That's, that's right. And your other win came in 1972, Talladega 500. That was, that was 1971, Talladega. Really? Okay. Well, uh, I read in, in Daryl Walter's book, um, it says that people had tire trouble, trouble at that race, and Daryl actually wound up leading the race, and he wound, and you wound up passing him to win the race. Is that right? That's right. Uh, uh, that was when uh, uh, Goodyear came out with a treaded design tire. Up until, then, up until that day, they were running slick, mm -hmm. slicks like they run today. And for whatever reason, they was trying a treaded tire, and uh, those tires uh, came apart. And uh, Waltrip and the about top five guys were all having tire trouble. In fact, it was probably about uh, about fifteen, fifteen or so guys that were factor back and everything had the new tires. The reason I went with the slick tires, the old last year tires. Well, I couldn't afford the new tires, and there was plenty of these slick tires around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, uh, you, know, you got to be lucky in racing, and you got to have an advantage, and that was my advantage. It, uh, they were working, and the traded tires weren't, and uh, uh, it enabled me to win that race. <laughs> uh, wow. And you finished, you won, a, you won the race. But did people in the pits, like Daryl said in his book, people wanted to buy Daryl's tires. Did they want to buy your tires, the the other teams? Well, we had to put up a guard there in our pits and just keep them from getting our tires red in the pits. <laughs> you know? And some of the some of the teams, you know, they scout around. And most of the independents were all running the, the slick tires, and some of them had had trouble. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, they were running them down the pit road to crews, buying those used tires and putting them on. <laughs> uh, there, you know, so they could uh, race hard, but by, by the time I got that done, it was too late. That's funny. That's awesome. You got you won the race. That's really cool. Uh, and well, I, I should go a few years earlier. A tal day uh, was the first ever race, and you were not a part of that. You boycotted that, right? Well, I was just uh, <laughs> being part of the gang, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I was young into racing, towards driving, and. You know, I was going to back up uh, the Richard Petties and the Bobby Allisons and Ken Arbers and everything, and uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, uh, I was actually the first one out the gate, not because I was a hero or anything, but, but because we had had a meeting there in the garage area and was all lined up, loaded up, and ready to go, and they said, we're going. Mm -hmm. I happened to be sitting in line first, so I drove out the gate first, so, <laughs> you know, it kind of, uh, um, put the blame on me, you know, oh, no. but it it was the uh it was the big guys, they were involved in that or I'd have never left, you know, but mm -hmm. you know what and I don't blame anybody. Uh it was just a uh after after we actually left and they uh NASCAR came up with uh like they normally do and make a rule or something right at the last minute. Mm -hmm. After we were out the gate to come up with the idea where well, we'll run ten laps and have a caution and so everybody can change your tires. Mm -hmm. well, well, if we had known that, 
Yeah, I'd have stayed. I'd have run in there, you know, run 10 laps and then put on a new rubber. Mm-hmm. But that rule wasn't made till we was on the interstate headed north. Mm-hmm. So I, I blame that as much on NASCAR as uh, on us leaving. But we didn't leave trying to hurt NASCAR. Mm-hmm. We either was leaving because we didn't want to get killed. <laughs> That's right. You, you know, there's enough mm-hmm. danger with everything being normal. But when you ride on, you're riding on a car that you know is uh, going to wear out in 10 laps, and you're going to hit that wall, uh, that'll make you you stand up. So uh, it was a safety factor reason we left, not something that we're trying to hurt NASCAR. And then after, uh, you know, they ran the whole race mm-hmm. by letting them stop every 10 laps or something and checking their tires, then everything was fine. And then after that, we went racing. Yeah. Was there any hostility or after the race, did you... Uh, Bill France Sr., I believe, was in charge, or Junior, I think, was? Yeah, I think that uh, Junior was in charge at that time. Well, was Junior in charge uh, uh, of NASCAR after the week after the next race, uh, after Talladega? Were you guys still upset about that, or did you guys just forget about it? Well, I guess uh, everybody, you know, there was some hostility about it, and in my, you know, I was... Uh, I was upset about it because I didn't need to miss no race, period. And uh, um, but it uh, it it worked itself out. It uh, you know once everybody realized, even NASCAR realized that you know how could they blame us to go out there and run a race mm-hmm. without uh, you know with uh, a tire you knew that wasn't going to work. And if you notice even today, today racing today. That they'll have a comp, what they call a competition le- uh, uh, yaller. Mm-hmm. So when they got a tire, they're tire they're not sure about. They'll run so many laps and let everybody come in and and pit and change them and look at them. And that all came from that that series there. So everybody learned something about from it. And I think NASCAR and competitors as a whole grew from it because. Uh, Everybody went back racing, and it is what it is today, so it worked out. Yeah, that's right. 1969 was a good year for you. 1970 also a good one. And it uh, looks like in 1970 you got you were driving a Dodge uh, Daytona, right? That's right. And uh, you say that's your favorite car, right? Well, that was a, that car, that was a car that uh, definitely was ahead of, time, ahead of its time. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it kind of proves itself now of all the street cars that's on the highway with wings back there and, and uh, now NASCAR uh, COT car mm-hmm. all got the wing on it, but not like the, uh, still not like what that Daytona Charger had. Uh, that thing stuck up in the airplane. The air looked like uh, it looked like one of these airplanes taxing out on, you know, American Airlines or aircraft or something getting ready to take off. It was uh, that was a, a super car, and it... Uh, Place like Daytona and Talladega, they, just, they were actually they were really hard to, to spin them out. They just that wing it had a lot of wing side force, and uh, it was actually uh, catchy in the corner. Hmm. And um, I know these new wings on the COT car, it's just a um, vertical wing. It don't have really anything much to help you on the side side thrust, but. Uh, Anyway, they look like they're going to be successful with it, so wish them the best. Mm-hmm. Well, have you drove the car tomorrow yet? Pardon? Have you drove the car tomorrow yet? No, I'm I'm due to drive one uh, Monday. This coming coming Monday at oh. Daytona in the test. Really? That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, do you, who are you driving for yourself or? No, this is John Carter, same guy that's uh, sponsoring me in the oh, okay. the Arca race. Uh huh. The driver, he's building a brand new COT car, nice. and in fact, I was up there in uh, North Carolina helping them work on it yesterday, oh. and it's going to be a pretty awesome car. It'll be a Dodge Charger. Carl Long mm-hmm. is, is going to be the driver. He didn't have the 500 with that? Well, yes. Oh, uh, I see. Carl Long is, and um, they opted to let me, uh, do, you know, assist them on the test. I'll be driving some test laps, and... And uh, what did I say on that, who the driver was? Carl Long. 
Carl Long, yeah. Mm-hmm. Carl Long is the driver, and uh, they're uh, Carl 